A lot has been made about Darko Ryakovich, how he's going to change the way the Toronto Raptors play this season, but there's a couple things he recently dropped in a quote that reveals his master plan for the Toronto Raptors defense specifically, as well as his rotations for the upcoming year. So we'll discuss that, including some comments on Pascal Siakam regarding his potential future, a little contract update for him, and Shea Gilgis Alexander discussing Canada basketball specifically for Montreal. So lots of stuff to break down. Without further ado, let's jump into the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is Darko. Darko Ryakovich's master plan. His plan, obviously, everyone knows. Darko Ryakovich, it's been discussed this entire offseason. We're going to be moving the ball. Selfishness is going out the door. Darko Ryakovich wants to integrate an offense that has the ball swinging, the ball in Scotty Barnes' hands, and just more team-oriented stuff. But he dropped some little nuggets, some little details that have I me... Mean, also encouraged because a lot of this has been made about the offensive end with Darko Ryakovic, how he's sort of going to bring people together, you know, get the ball swinging, but the defense has been a little bit of a question mark, and he discussed this in a recent quote, basically saying that he thinks still for the Toronto Raptors, just the type of players that they have, we are not going to get away from the aggressive identity on defense, and personally, I think that is huge, because for everything you want to say about Nick Nurse, Defensively, offensively, he had some really good schemes, and particularly when we had the sort of personnel, veteran players, experienced, all that type of stuff, the team really worked well in terms of running these wild sort of schemes, but the aggressive style of defense, when they were really pushing into the other team's offensive players, you know, at the point of attack, right, pushing them out of their comfort zone, swinging the ball. The Raptors' defense under Nick Nurse's sort of tenure was regarded as one of the toughest defenses to go up against, to score up against, and a lot of it was due to the Toronto Raptors' aggressive trapping style and stuff along those lines, especially when we had high IQ veteran basketball players. But we did have the athletes, but Nick Nurse's schemes got a little bit too complicated there at the end, and it led to a lot of corner threes being released for other teams and high percentages from other squads, but it was a huge plus for the Toronto Raptors especially when executed correctly, the aggressive defense was a positive for the Raptors. So I like that we're not dialing it back that much on that end, but Darko went on to say that, and I think it's good for us, it's good for our defense, but it's a little bit more controlled, I would say. A little bit more reserved at times, maybe, yeah, a little bit less gambling effect and that we might have had last year. And basically, I sort of touched on it again. It's great to be aggressive. It's great to sort of take the offensive players that are coming down on the opposing side and get them out of their comfort zone, not let them sort of execute their schemes, get into their sets. And this was a plus for the Raptors, but at times we gamble a lot. This is something OG Ananobi did a little bit. It's the reason he averaged so many steals last year, even though he's one of the best, if not the best on-ball defender in the entire league. There's times where you can get little, little hand-happy, jump into lanes, reaching for balls and those types of things. So the fact that not just OG, but the entire roster is going to be a little bit more conserved, but aggressive, right? It's something that pretty well any youth coach will tell you, right? If you play good enough defense, other team will turn it over on their own. Obviously, there's a big difference between junior basketball and then stuff at the NBA, but the principle still applies. If you have elite defenders, which the Toronto Raptors have as individuals on this roster, guys like OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam, especially if it's a lighter load on the offensive end. Pirtle can even move around a little bit around the three-point line. Dennis Schroeder, guys off the bench like McDaniels, Boucher, Precious, lots of pieces on this team that can play defense, and if we play aggressive styles so we're getting the most out of our strong defenders, but not giving up open shots because we're running crazy all over the place rotations, that's going to be a huge plus for this Toronto Raptors team going into the season. We'll get us back to the position where we are one of the top defensives in the NBA as we've kind of taken a step back at times over the past couple of years. But that's definitely a huge plus for Darko Ryakovich's sort of scheme plans for the defensive end for this team, but also discuss the potential rotation. Now, he mentioned this off the cuff during media day and stuff, and I just want to reiterate on it here that he said ideally that he'd run with a 10-man rotation on most nights. So that's something, again, we're seeing the rotations have been a huge topic of discussion because even though I feel like we've said this on most off-seasons, but the Raptors do feel like they have more depth this year with Otto Porter Jr. coming back, obviously the signing of McDaniels, right? Gary Trent Jr. now being on the bench full-time, it seems like, one of him or Dennis Schroeder, and then Grady Dick getting drafted, Marquis Noel potentially playing a role. Right, there are pieces on the Toronto Raptors team, and even in the first game of preseason, we had 11 guys, or 10 guys, really in that rotation off the bench, and Precious and Otto didn't really play, uh, and 
Christian Coloco's also still out of the mix here at this point, and we still didn't even get Grady Dick integrated and mixed into the offense. So they are into the real rotation minutes. So the Raptors have a lot of players, so it's nice that Darko isn't going to look at that and say, hey, sure, we have a lot of talented pieces on that bench, but let's run seven guys tonight. Let's just let's just really milk that. Like That doesn't make sense. It led to injuries for the Toronto Raptors over the past few years, so I like this approach, and I like that after the first game of the, the preseason and stuff, he's not moving away from it. But let me know what you guys think about Darko Rayakovich's sort of schemes and plans for this year. Next thing we're taking a look at is Pascal Siakam. A little contract update. Now, again, this is going to continue to be a part of Toronto Raptors' discussion. It's going to be a main topping, talking point for this entire year. Is the Toronto Raptors' current best player, our top guy, Pascal Siakam, great Hall NBA champion, all that type of stuff, as an unrestricted free agent come the end of the season. And there's been a lot of chatter about a contract extension about Pascal willing to do it, and then uh, the Raptors not that interested. Masai even said himself during uh, media day that, hey, we're going to wait to see how Pascal Siakam, how this team looks with the less selfish style of offense. And we're still not really sure what the heck is going to go on with the Pascal Siakam extension. And basically, we have a little update coming from Jake Fisher saying that uh, when he talked about uh, Pascal Siakam not wanting to sign an extension anywhere else outside of uh, Toronto, he said, from what I heard, I think that will change if we get another regular season and Toronto is a team that doesn't want to sign him an extension or hasn't done it. So basically, again, this summer, there were rumors, there was reports. Apparently, they were really close to a potential trade with Pascal Siakam moving away, but the value that Toronto Raptors could receive could get back was pretty null. There wasn't a lot of sort of pieces really being thrown the way of the Toronto Raptors in any potential Pascal Siakam packages. Not like embarrassingly bad, maybe embarrassingly bad when you consider how good Pascal Siakam is, but basically the Toronto Raptors were offered a lot, whole lot of nothing for Pascal, some average players, but no star guys back in return. The main reason for it was Pascal Siakam was unwilling to guarantee that he would sign an extension with whatever team ended up trading for him. So obviously then you take on the risk of having a f superstar or star player that could flight that could leave just after one year or potential rental the same way the Toronto Raptors had Kawhi for only one season. So it makes sense why his value is kind of in the tank, but apparently Jake Fisher is saying that the Toronto Raptors struggling and there's no real deal out there on the table. There's no real opportunity for him to come back next season. Maybe he'd be willing to change his mind and change his approach and sign an extension with another team if he were to be traded. So that's very interesting, something to keep an eye out for. Again, I'm just hoping the Toronto Raptors keep winning, and then Pascal Siakam ends up re-signing, and this team is looking good. But let me know what you guys think about that whole entire situation. But the final thing we're discussing in this video is Shea Gilgis Alexander speaking on Canada basketball. Canadian basketball, particularly in Montreal, a city I lived in for a few years, but, uh, you know, came out. Repping a Habs jersey. Yeah, this might be controversial. I don't have the screenshot here, but Shea was wearing a Habs jersey saying, you know, the NBA should put a team here. Obviously, his teammate, Lou Dort, is there. And personally, I actually watched the Toronto Raptors game against Montreal with Kawhi Leonard back in 2019, and that crowd was electric. It was fun. It was great to see. Obviously, the Montreal Canadiens have one of the biggest fan bases in sports. Yeah, not uh, not that tailored to our current audience with uh, the Toronto Raptors, but definitely check out Abs Digest if you're interested in Montreal Canadiens news. But again, it's great having the Toronto Raptors as the team to support in Canada and stuff along those lines, but it would be absolutely amazing to see Montreal get a basketball team, Vancouver get a basketball team. The support for basketball has just gone up all across the country. I mean, I'm out here in Newfoundland chatting about the Raptors every single day, watching the kids, even from when I grew up, and I'm 23 years old. I was playing youth basketball like barely, like a decade ago, if not even that. So even from that point to now, the number of club teams just here in St. John's went from like three teams in our city and to, on our island in our province to like per age group, like 20 teams, 25 teams sort of rolling. Obviously in Ontario and across the country, most of our viewers are listening, probably more teams than you got going to Newfoundland for club ball. But it's just great to see the interest pick up all across the country. And hopefully it leads to some expansion franchises for Canada, for places like Montreal, for places like Vancouver. But I talked about this on Global News actually the other day. So check out that highlight there if you uh, want to want to see that. But folks, you guys are best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. If you want to see the latest on um, Toronto Raptors potentially uh, career-threatening illness, check out this video right here. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.